Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to find aliasing distortion in plugins on purpose, but then use that to create new sound effects. And guys, I'm actually moving very soon, so things will be a little bit different. I'll be in a new environment probably in the next video, unless I get inspired and want to make a bunch of videos before I move, uh, which might be the case, but I might be too busy. So uh, in any event, ignore the mess back there because it's a, just a disaster. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform for creators with thousands of classes on art, design, and many more topics. It's one of my favorite places to go to learn new things. And there's actually a couple new Reaper tutorials on here, and I had no idea. There is an intro to digital audio recording, learn the basics of Reaper DAW from Brian Knapp. I just discovered this now. Uh, it's been a while since I searched for Reaper tutorials on here, and I was surprised to find this one, as well as this one, mastering sound design, how to build better soundscapes for your videos. So there's a 52 minute class and a 39 minute class. Uh, that uses Reaper, and I'm sure you'll get some great tips from those videos. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to every single class and workshop. It's a great community where everyone is just really focused on learning, really encouraging, and there's great class projects for you to work on and put your skills to practical use. Skillshare is offering a free trial of Skillshare Premium. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. If you want to stay on for a full year, it's only about $10 a month. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This is something that I showed in a recent live stream, just kind of came up in conversation, and I wanted to do a full tutorial on it. And it's an idea that I've had for quite a long time, but uh, just never ended up making the video. So we're gonna set up a an empty MIDI item on a track. So I'm just control dragging to create a new MIDI item. And on the effects chain for this item, I'm going to insert the tone generator plugin. So this is a built-in plugin in Reaper. When I press play, it will make a tone. The reason we're putting it on a MIDI item is so that it plays and stops as I want, rather than having it on the track effects where it just plays continuously all the time. And we're actually going to change the bass frequency all the way up to the top, 24,000 Hertz, which produces a tone that we can't hear. And I can verify on my recording meters that it is sending a signal through, but that's going to create aliasing distortion when we put on certain plugins after it. What I'm going to use in this case is one of my favorite plugins from Air Music Tech called Air Lo-Fi. And this is a third-party plugin, but it comes in a bundle with like 24, 27 other plugins. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites and it's super useful. So when we have a signal that is going above the Nyquist frequency, which is half the sample rate, anything that's above that gets bounced downward and can be in the audible spectrum. So if we're sending out a 24K tone and we're running it through a plugin that is uh, set to a sample rate below uh, 48K, then we're gonna start to hear new tones and, and, and sounds that are not in the original source. And I'm just going to adjust the sample rate on this, just down a little bit. So there at 44.6 kilohertz, we start getting a low frequency tone. You could figure out the exact tones that you get from this using math, but I, it's too late for that in the day. I'm not gonna bother with that, but just understand that we're sending a frequency that's too high for the processor to process cleanly. So then it um, aliases, it bounces back down and creates tones. Uh, let's actually put in a metering plugin in here. So let's take the oscilloscope. No, let's take the uh, spectrum analyzer on here. And so with this plugin off, it's just this little spike here at 24K up at the very top of the frequency spectrum. We turn this plugin on. Let's do half the sample rate. So, so at 24,000 Hertz is the maximum sample rate. We're going to get a new tone. We actually got a low frequency tone in there. So we're sending the highest frequency, cutting it off at 24K and it bounces back into the low frequencies. We're getting like a zero Hertz tone. So 
I'm just going to scroll my mouse wheel and find some cool sounds in here. Do need to remember to loop this. There we go. So it doesn't just stop. So as you can see, lots of interesting sounds, lots of weird, cool, lo-fi, retro kind of sounds are in there just adjusting the sample rate. We can also adjust the bass frequency in the tone generator, which will change that relationship again. So. So lots of fun right there. I love that kind of stuff. But let's take it one step further. Let's add in another plugin. I'm going to add in one of my favorites from Devious Machines. This is called Duck. And so I'm going to put Duck uh, at the top of the effects chain. So it goes Tone Generator on the item, then Duck, then Lo-Fi, and then the Spectrum Analyzer. I'm going to set Duck to Repeat. And so it's just going to repeat this envelope shape. This is a volume curve. Um, on quarter note beats. Let's say it's it's one bar and it only uh, is open for this much time. And so it looks like that. And Air Lo-Fi also has awesome things like the LFO built in or the envelope mod. So by having this before the Lo-Fi plugin, this volume curve can affect the envelope. So if I set this to depth plus 20, it's going to increase the sample rate knob by 20% um, based on the incoming dynamics. And if we add in some LFO, maybe going downwards a little bit, maybe a, tri uh, a triangle shape and some random number for the speed, it's going to be different every time. There are a few different ways that we can actually record this within the project and so that you can chop it up and use it as the sample library later. Uh, we can do it within another track or we can use the bounce function. So let's look at both of those options. I actually did a video on resampling. So we're just gonna make a track and call it record. And we're going to right click on it and set this to record output stereo and we're going to route track one into track two by just drag and drop from the routing button like that. Uh, and let's set this to minus six just to be safe. And we can also alt click on the routing button to disable the master send on track one. So we're only going to hear it through track two. And now we see it on the meters for both tracks. So now I just need to hit record on the track and then hit record in the transport. And as this is going, I'm just going to play around with the, the shape, the envelope in duck and the sample rate and LFO and all that kind of stuff uh, just to get a whole variety of, of sounds. And I, I might just go in uh, 30 seconds or so.
And I'll just leave it there. And we can see that it's all gone out into different uh, takes, but we could just go to the first take and close all these plugin windows. And if I show only one take at a time and extend this out, here's the full recording. And these are all kind of sequenced to the grid even. So that worked great. And it would be a really simple matter of chopping that up and turning that into a sample library. All right, I'm just gonna mute that track for now and I'm gonna bring back the routing for the original track. So the other way of recording this as you're playing is to go up to the file menu and go to save live output to disk, bounce. And in this window, we've just set up a folder to record into. We give it a name, which you can use wildcards here so it matches the file name of the project. You can also choose a format and there's other options like saving the output while it's recording or playing. Uh, you can have it stop automatically when you hit stop. So yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just basically starts recording as soon as you hit start here. And you can basically play until your hard drive fills up. So pretty awesome option um, without having to change your routing in any way. It, it just gets what's coming out of the master track. So there you go. This is a fun technique. Uh, I don't think it's an original idea, but it's something that I kind of came up with on my own using this set of plugins. You can swap the lo-fi plugin for some other distortion plugin. Anything that has a sample rate control is gonna work great for this, but really any distortion can kind of do some similar things like that, especially if that plugin doesn't have any oversampling or anti-aliasing function. You could replace the duck plugin using any LFO plugin or just uh, print a tone generator to a WAV file and then use fades on the item. You can duplicate it a hundred times and, and randomize the fades. And then as it's running through one of those, just, uh, those aliasing plugins, it creates your sample library for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.